Hello, everybody, and welcome to the commentary of part one of the Studio C documentary. I'm Master ETH. Before we get started, I just want to thank some of our patrons Aunt Jemima, Crunk115, Xavier Quinn, Dalibor, Aria Mayer, Max Kunst, Jeremiah Burroughs, Sawyer Smith, Logan James, David French, and thank you to the rest of the patrons that have supported me and are currently supporting me. Thank you so much. So I freaking love Studio C with all my heart. I grew up watching them. Me and my friend family love them so much. I honestly think it's one of the best comedy shows, especially like in the earlier seasons, that just do a lot of things really well, I think. Uh, this intro is a combination of a bunch of different intros that the cast did and I added different music so that way it fits better. I couldn't find like a good high quality recording of some of them which is kind of a bummer uh, so that kind of made me a little bit sad but I think it looks good overall. I also added the the newer cast in this intro because originally I was going to make this one big long video but then I realized oh that would take a year and I did a poll which I also mentioned in the video. I did a poll to see if people wanted one long, big long video or in two parts but I decided to do it in two parts and I also explained that in this documentary as well but I eventually just went with two parts because I figured you know it would be better to analyze the show in different parts because in a way both casts almost feel like their own shows like I, I know it's both Studio C but the new cast and the old cast have different forms of like comedy and so in a perfect world studio c would have ended at season nine and i wish they did but according to some research that i've been doing on part two apparently season 17 and 18 got greenlit by multiple sources so i'll mention that in part two for sure but uh yeah so that's great it's so me recording in my office which that's gonna be part of it and then part of it is on my couch I wanted to record in my kitchen, but I'm like, I'll probably save that for part two because the thing with this video is I really wanted to do something different with recording and record in more spaces instead of just sitting down and recording for an hour because I wanted to do something different with this video in the sense of like, I really wanted it to feel higher production value yeah th that joke that paper joke that was pure improv by the way i did not write that down i'm like oh let's just do this dumb thing that facebook song is also good all these are like classics the the organ trail and the the other one before that that was really good so that intro that was just shown of the newer cast that's gonna be like the intro to part two some of it and then i'm also gonna edit it with different music and stuff and it's gonna be great I finally learned how to do 3D, uh, basic 3D in Premiere, so I'm trying to do that a lot more because I think it looks a little bit better, at least a little more technical on that aspect. Also, I haven't really printed out a spreadsheet since this because I, I realized the words are so small that if I printed out a full 10 seasons, it wouldn't look any better. So I have yet to print it out, yet I'll probably print it out once I finish looking at the current seasons. That's probably what's going to happen, I would imagine, but I don't know. So there we go, that was the introduction. So this is season one. I didn't think I would actually talk for that long, dear goodness. I had notes and everything. Um, I like that edit right there that I did that took a while because there was like seven things running at once. Okay, this is the first montage. And I, I wanted to do montages in this documentary because I think it's really cool when people do like non-verbal montages that like further the story. And also, okay, here's the thing. In my office, I'm looking at it right now. There's a hook in my office that's in my ceiling. I did not put it there. It's been there since I moved in here. And so this is like one of my favorite scenes from, from part one. Purely because nobody else has done this on YouTube. Like, I bet you 100% nobody's done this exact thing on YouTube. So I was like, okay, I have a unique thing that I can do. And I should utilize this more often in part two, I think. Because I only used it once. I just didn't want to overuse it. But I'll probably use this in part two to, like, explain something with the whiteboard. Because honestly, 
the hook in the ceiling. I don't know why it's there. I don't know who put it there. It wasn't me, but it's there. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So it's just with this documentary and future documentaries in the future, because I want to move more towards long form documentaries like this. I really want to do different stuff by like recording in different situations. And I feel like that would just be better overall, make it higher quality, you know, because I, I really was striving to make this as best as it could be to the point where, yes, I have an entire spreadsheet of all of the seasons, all the joke trends. I have a huge spreadsheet, which I will go over by the end of all of this because it's a lot of information. It's super dense. I put way too much work into it, and I'm just really glad that this part, part one, got way more views than I thought it would. And that made me super happy and made me realize, oh, if I actually take my time with projects, people will care a lot more because I'm not constantly in their faces every day with micro content and whatnot, you know? So that's kind of my strategy is kind of doing the opposite of like less is more. Of like instead of doing reels and shorts and whatever, I'll just focus on like the big thing and let the big thing speak for itself and like barely market it in the sense of like micro content. Oh, wow. We're already on season two. Wow, I have notes from season one. Gosh, we're like flying by here. Okay, since we're on season two, I got my notes. I, I don't have a lot, but for season one, so originally in season one, this documentary was going to be a collaborative effort between my brother Eli and I, since my first documentary had him in it as well. We even watched like a, f a few episodes together, but essentially we had different viewpoints on the show and I figured that it would be faster if I just did this project all by myself because instead of having like to schedule calls with him every single week, that's the only note I had for season one, but we're on season two currently. Um, season two is good. I think it's one of the better seasons overall, but I think season six is where it's been. I had it written on the board, but then I erased it because I needed the whiteboard for part two. So I'm kind of blanking on which one. It's in the documentary and I did a poll and most of the people got the answer right. So I'd feel really stupid if I just said, oh, season six is the best one. Actually, it's like season five, but I'm pretty sure it's it's six, five and then two in order of like best seasons. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure if my memory serves correct, it is that. Um, yeah, so season two is where the brand new intro hops in, the classic song uh, that everybody loves from Studio C. I love the old song. I'm a fan of the old song. I think it's just better overall. Also, all of those figurines in the back, like that's all in my closet. I wanted to do it like that because I think it looks more professional. Uh, when I have to do uh, video calls for work, I can just shut the closet and then it looks a little bit more professional. Plus, I like how high it is up there because I don't have a whole lot of space in this office, even though it's huge. I don't have a lot of like cabinet space, you know, so I just kind of utilize that. I have a bunch of different knickknacks that I've collected over the years. In my old office, it was just like uh, a dresser in the back, even though my office was super small. And now because I have a big office, I can do documentaries like this where I record all over my room and it feels bigger because, well, it is a bigger office, you know? Yeah. So in season two, it made me realize how many jokes they made that like, I okay, actually this, I had a comment that related to this that I want to bring up uh, that actually related to um, this thing because like i say oh it doesn't age well and stuff like that and i'm like half joking but i'm also showing the clips in context of like hey these jokes were made you can kind of decide for yourself if it's a good joke or not or if it didn't age well or not like because i don't want to be the one to be like oh this joke is terrible it didn't age well like i said that sure but i also wanted to show the clips by themselves so people can understand like the actual context you know so I actually had a comment about this. It said, as a fan of Studio C, I'm really impressed with what you've done here. I hope your hard work in making this video gets more recognized. Thank you for that. I would say my only issue is the intentionally scoping out problematic things in a show as harmless and as positive as Studio C. As a POC lady who started watching the show as an adult, I never found any blatant misogyny or racism or any other problems or issues mentioned in the video in their sketches. In fact, the examples from sketches of those things you gave are done in pure satire. See, and that's why I wanted to show the clips by themselves, because I want people to see... It's kind of like a case-by-case -case basis. 
kind of thing, you know? So I wanted to show the clips and let people decide, oh, does this go too far, does it not? Because, to be honest, Studio C doesn't really go too far with jokes. For me, personally, not everybody feels that way, but I feel like I brought it up because I wanted to talk about the different stuff that they did per season. Uh, so that's mostly why I mentioned it. This comment continues saying, acknowledging the fact that these things exist, like men who expect women to make them sandwiches and not a promotion of these things. That is very true. I agree with that. It's literally making fun of them or being as edgy as a show like Studio C can be. That's fair. The only thing about the show that offended me, but again, not really, since it's just the case of how they all ended up working together in college and predominantly white Utah, and not a casting choice, was the lack of POC, especially females, in the original cast. Having a more diverse cast later on didn't improve it, so that ultimately didn't matter. That's fair. <laughs> there were a lot of white people in, in the earlier seasons. That's fair. I, I totally understand that. And I do appreciate that the newer cast is more diverse. The uh, comment continues, I think watching a show with the goal of finding things that potentially could offend you or something else that didn't age well is a bad way to go about things and evaluate art. I think I disagree with this sentence because the comedy is very of its time. And I think it's important to acknowledge when something is of its time doesn't mean it's good or bad it just means that these jokes were made like a decade ago and i feel like if you were to watch it now if these skits were made now i feel like they would get a lot more attention negatively than they did like a decade ago that's that's mostly why i'm bringing it up looking at it through a lens of challenging my nostalgia you know is this joke good or bad honestly with most studio c jokes i think they're fine i don't think they go too far I just think it's funny watching these sketches and forgetting like all the stuff they did and that's mostly why I'm bringing it up. Comment continues, it's good for what it is, but still mid sketch show for families like Studio C has things that could offend someone. Watching it from that perspective, you would probably never get through all five seasons of a higher quality but shorter lasting sketch comedy show for young adults and beyond like in Living Color. Now I don't know what Living Color is, I think it's another uh, show by the same company i think i don't know but i appreciate this comment it's a lot and then i responded to said comment i said i love studio c so much so i'm not coming at the show from a place of malice truth is people made different kinds of jokes a decade ago i did say that studio c is not a place of malice but i do think it's important to look at the show objectively and talk about the things that they literally did in the show the show isn't racist or misogynistic but it definitely uses those tropes on occasion to prove a point if that makes sense Plus, I do think nostalgia is a factor of the show, and that's how I feel about the situation. Alright, so now we're talking about Season 3. Now, I wanted to make this commentary more so because of Season 3, because there are three missing sketches in this season that I wanted to film with two of my friends, so it'd be like three people and three sketches. So, these never got filmed because I had my friends over for my birthday, we hung out, we stayed up all night and nothing got filmed. We were just hanging out and talking and I really loved it. So that plan failed, but that's kind of okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. Honestly, I had a fun time. So these were the sketch ideas I had for this video that never got filmed. So the first appearance of the couch, I wanted to do a skit with Max and Zach, as I wrote in my notes. I wanted to hold up a spreadsheet and said, Season 3 had a good mix of jokes with a lot of awkwardness, juxtaposition, and prop humor, and definitely didn't lean too heavy on one form of humor, and then I wanted it to zoom out to three guys on a couch, like, surprised and screaming because they teleported into frame. I thought that would be kind of funny, as a nod to, like, the awkwardness juxtaposition that I'm talking about. In another scene, I would say, ah, yeah, since I am a man, I'm allowed to make fun of man, and then it would cut to, to Max and Zach still on the couch, like staring at me angrily as if I offended them. And I'm like, oh, hey guys, I didn't realize you were still here. And then they would start fighting me and I would go, ah, I thought that would be funny. And then because I also talked about the role of three in this season, I'm pretty sure I, I did mention it in this video, but I wanted it there to be a third scene where, and I wrote in my notes, a third scene to make a joke about the role of three trope, which also didn't get filmed. So this would be me laying on the couch, the door kicks down, and then Zach or Max would say, Hey, he's doing the rule of three, get him! And they would try to, like, capture me. But m for multiple reasons, this didn't work out, because one, I have a dog, and if anybody kicked the door down, my dog would freak out and ruin the scene. So that scene was kind of impossible to film. 
Uh, plus, it wasn't just me, Max, and Zach. Everybody had their significant other over as well. So we were all hanging out, and I didn't really want to exclude anybody from hanging out just to film some dumb scenes for my dumb video, you know? So that was really uh, the thing about Season 3 that I really wanted to try, but it, I didn't end up doing for obvious reasons. And that's okay. You know, sometimes plans fail, but, you know, I wanted to mention it in this section, in this commentary, because I think it's really interesting to look at the behind the scenes of stuff, especially with this documentary. So much has happened in my life since I started this documentary that I have just forgotten about. I got sick one time, you know, stuff like that. I just, yeah, it's a lot. Oh, this is a really cool scene. It's, it's, uh, a bunch, it's, I nested a bunch of clips together and did the basic 3d and i'm like oh i like this this is cool i th i think that was a really cool scene this comment is from a friend of mine time puppeteer great youtuber um he's been around for a while commenting on like every single one of my uploads which thank you for that by the way uh, time puppeteer says i've never ever heard of this show it looks like they covered a lot of different styles of content to cater to different people because it seems like when they did a certain style it just made you feel icky Fantastic video, really enjoying this work. Didn't expect a comeback video like this. Oh yeah, this took me like six months to make. And then I said, this is only part one, and thanks. Yeah, so season three was the introduction, I think, to like the super short sketches, which I wasn't a fan of. Marcus Picks Up Chicks uh, was okay. It's not great. The thing with, uh, and I'm gonna add this in part two, because I was listening to a podcast, Smartless. Great podcast. Highly recommend it if you want to listen to celebrity interviews with, like, some jokes flying everywhere. It's great. But I was listening to Smartless, and Will Arnett was talking about, like, comedy shows. And I really like that clip so much, I'm probably going to just uh, add it in part two. And I don't do the quote justice, so I'm going to wait for that to come out. But it's a really good quote that really shows, like, Studio C in a nutshell. And I think it does it really well. So either I'll do it for, like, the conclusion or, like after season 16 or something or yeah season 16 i don't know i'll figure it out all right another comment thank you for this studio c has lived in my head for a great number of years such a mood i look forward to seeing more of your genuinely informative in-depth documentaries thank you i'm gonna make more and they're gonna be great all right now we're on freaking season four i don't have any notes for season four so i'm just gonna read a bunch of comments because i can honestly I don't have a lot of insights, it's just me recording on the couch talking about stuff. Alright, I'm gonna read another comment. This is awesome, totally agree on most of your points here. I can't imagine how much time this took. Six months. Uh, looking forward to part two. Thanks. Took about six months and I imagine part two will take about as long to produce. Taking a little break this week to spend it with family, but I should be ready to work on part two next week. Yeah, I took a well, a well-deserved break after part one because I've been working on this for six months. All right, welcome to season five. I don't really have any notes. Uh, there's a jewel cameo, my dog, and that wasn't planned. That just kind of happened out of nowhere. So that's fun love that for me i originally wanted jewel to be like the outro of the documentary but i i went with like the somber music with the long credits because i like that uh because i wanted to thank all of my patrons past and present because this took so long to make as well so that's what i did gonna read some more freaking comments because i can and shout out to everybody leaving a comment some people left some pretty long comments so especially shout out to you yeah and most of them are positive honestly i really i really like this a lot so here's a comment my dude i'm a huge video essay fan uh same that's why i made it says me uh this has been a delight i'm preparing my soul for the very 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 sad story to come <laughs> yeah and i said same and thanks also i'm not even ready for what's to come <laughs> that's what i said another comment oh and the nostalgia i'm scared to watch past season nine though and then I said, I get to torture myself with that soon. And I've already started research. Actually, I've already finished uh, season 10. Like, that section is done. I just, like, finished editing that section. And that's already on Patreon. So you already know that. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so season 10 is about 16 minutes long. Uh, the section for part 2. So I'm thinking that part 2 might be longer than part 1. And that's not on purpose. I just had a lot to say about season 10. And I also did 
uh, some montages here and there to make it more stylized. And I'm talking about season 10 when we're in season 5, so whoops. Or, yeah, season 5. But I don't care. This is my freaking commentary. I can do whatever I want. Oh gosh, Susan Weber. Honestly, Su okay, Susan Weber is like the worst character of Studio C. And something I've noticed from season 10 in relating to this is that so far in season 10, there's no like trademark characters. And I get that it's like their first season together technically in season 10 with the newer cast. So like I get it. But there's really no like trademark characters. There's not a lot of voice acting. And I think season 5 is way better than season 10. Oh, the Breaking Bad sketch. That was season 5. Ugh. Season 5 and 6 are so freaking good. If I were to recommend any season, it would be season 5 and 6 of Studio C. Specifically, because I think it's like the peak of the show. And I think it definitely shows in like the kind of skits they were making. I love it. And it's also the Scott Sterling season. And that was like the most popular sketch. And it still is their most popular sketch. Even though there's like... 16 seasons of Studio C. Alright, so season six. So if you notice, Disaster Eath appears in season six and then appears later uh, to torture me with with more of Susan Weber. And I, I that's like one of my favorite parts from this documentary as well. Uh, I like doing the cinematic stuff when I can. I just think it keeps the video interesting and fun and you don't know what to expect. I was sick for part of it. Uh, Jewel wasn't even supposed to be in the shot on the bed, but there she is, being the star of the show. Ba so, it basically just meant she had an early cameo, uh, for that specific scene. Because my original plan was to just have her at the end, like I said earlier, but, you know, that didn't happen. Also, when I was in the yellow chair in front of the room, talking about Studio C, the TV was just a green screen, and Jewel was just walking around in the front room the entire time, so if you heard a little jingling noise, that's why. So ever since then, I've tried to like not record with her. Yeah, this scene. I've tried not to record with her in the room because she keeps jingling and then it like kind of ruins my audio and I'm a real stickler about how my audio sounds. Literally for season 10, the season 10 section of part two, I was like overthinking the audio quality because I've tried mixing and mastering it so many times i got so fed up i had to take a break for a day because i'm like this is annoying me but i think i'm finally happy with how the audio sounds in in season 10 so that's good i i remastered it remixed it whatever however you want to say i i fixed it so if you watch uh season 10 the season 10 video and it sounds a little off don't worry i fixed it and then it'll be fixed in the final version all right season seven is where it gets weird I'm not going to lie, like season seven, out of all of the seasons, I feel like it's one of the worst of the older cast. All of the surreal humor just like doesn't really work. It's just kind of shock value. And obviously I wrote those all as jokes. But again, it comes with the point of like, yeah, I wrote these down to make a joke about the jokes themselves. Because otherwise, I'm just gonna, like, cry and freak out that, you know, there's dismemberment. Literally. And blood. There's so much blood. Like, that's not even a joke. There's an entire sketch about blood. I literally said that in the video, too. Like, why? Why is there so much? I Like, season seven was, I don't know what they were on, but they were on something. Because this is, the season seven is the most insane season of studio c i think i've ever seen in my entire life and i feel like i fell off at season six or something because i don't remember like any of these sketches i don't know why but uh yeah so season seven is just the insane season i don't know why it just is all right we're on season eight now this is back to detective eth uh i haven't done detective eth in a while and i wanted to bring him back because there's a mystery with season eight. There's one of the episodes missing. So I made it this whole cinematic thing. And in part two, it gets even better. So if you love Detective Eth, you're going to love part two. You're going to love season 10. Because uh, half of that is just Detective Eth trying to solve a mystery. And I really want to do that more often because it's so much fun to play a detective character. I, I love it. I love the music that I added for Detective Eth. There's like a very specific you know it's like it makes me so happy 
beyond words. Like, I feel like it's one of my best accomplishments is a detective character that just fits so well. The masking is perfect. I found the best scenery. It looks realistic. I just, I'm so happy with it. I just love Detective Eth. It's like my favorite character I've ever played. And I always want to do him way more often because it's just a lot, a lot more fun. I love to pull out the, the saucy jazz music for, for Detective Eth because I just think it's so fun. I also love the costume. That's actually uh, some behind the scenes. So I had, I think I, for Halloween, I was Sherlock one time and I, that was my costume. And so from then on, I'm like, okay, this is just the detective costume. It's literally a Sherlock outfit from the BBC show that I made. And by made, I mean, I stole my mom's <laughs> uh, trench coat that she like never used. So she doesn't care. She's fine. So it's that. And then like a scarf. But the scarf isn't really a scarf because it has like a pocket on it. I don't even know what it is, but it works way too well. And also there's Ticino on my desk. And the reason why it's there is because one, I want it to be a future sponsor of my videos because I have ordered them that product for years. I'm in love with it. It's so good. It's like coffee without the caffeine. Not sponsored, but will be soon once I get 5,000 subscribers. So please subscribe because I love this product so much. It's coffee without the caffeine. Like, and decaf coffee has caffeine. It's cr yeah. So I don't mean this to be a shell for that, but it's great. And I'm working so hard for it to be a sponsor soon because I just love the product and I want other people to know about it and save money on it. You know, anyways, I don't know if I'll cut that out or not, but oh yeah, there's vomit. <laughs> this was out of everything that Studio C has done. This is the one thing I chose to censor myself. YouTube didn't make me, I did it because it's it's the grossest thing Studio C has ever done. And I didn't want to show it because I didn't want to even see it. I was actually quite disgusted. I'm not gonna lie, it was bad. But of course that sketch was one of the missing sketches. So that's probably why they nuked that episode to be honest. I don't know, but yeah. Oh, so Lobster Bisque Guy is back, and he's like the best character of the entire show. Don't at me. Yeah, I said it. I said it right. Anyways. All right, this is season nine. The last good season of Studio C. Uh, mostly because they have a live section with an SNL guest. And I wish they had more SNL guests, but this was their first one. It was a good send-off to the end of the show. And by end of the show, I mean with the old cast, because let's be real, the show should have ended after season nine. And uh, after watching season 10, I'm starting to lean more like, oh yeah, they should have ended the show at season nine. They, they just should have. And it, it, we live in a world with 16 seasons of Studio C, soon to be 17 and 18 seasons of Studio C, which I don't know if I'm going to cover those. I might want to go insane after part two. Who knows? I don't know. But yeah, the sketches of the SNL section were actually really good i enjoyed them they were pretty funny let's read some comments one person said i thought we both died what a lovely half year uh not for me i wasn't that lovely it was okay and i said i i know right hope you're doing okay and then uh, my friend said i've been writing an update comeback video for a few months it sounds way more expensive than it is it's like 200 words haha <laughs> i just haven't found motivation to write it and step back on the platform just been through a lot right now and YouTube has felt like a stress I can't add to my life right now. Valid! That's partially why I wanted to do like a big project instead of like these little projects over time because I can take my time with big projects, you know? All right, another comment. Studio C is just Canadian SNL, but somehow not Canadian. Honestly, that's, and I said, this is the most accurate description I've ever heard. So freaking true. And then my brother commented, he said, greatest, no, most memorable, yes. Also, I miss family video, because I mentioned that in the intro. Also, also, I helped with this kind of, which I also meant mentioned in here, and I mentioned in the credits. And then he also said, OMG, I'm smart, <laughs> screws up. Because, okay, so there's a reason why that looked bad in, like, season two or three, when I did the, oh my gosh, I'm smart. So that uh, ended up like that because of the fact that um, there's been multiple times where I've lost parts of the video, but thank God I backed it up to a hard drive and thank God I save every two seconds. I lost that section 
And then I realized, oh, I exported it earlier. And so, like, I, I went through the footage and I found it. But then I couldn't edit it because it was already part of the clip. So I, I also think it's ironic. Uh, so the joke kind of works better when it's, like, doesn't look the best. So it kind of worked in my favor, even though there's nothing I could do about it, to be honest. So uh, somebody said, another banger, baby girl. I said, oh, thanks. It's almost about to surpass my last documentary, which is insane. It has surpassed my last documentary within like a week. And I'm like, what the frick? That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Disaster Eath is back torturing me with Susan Weber. Three seasons later. I set up a joke three seasons ago. I'm so proud. Like, oh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> Somebody said another comment said, what studio see, though? And I said a comedy show. There's not a space with between in and drill. How did I not notice that till just now? The video's been up for like a month. How did I not see that? What? Are you joking? Well, that's there forever. Cool. All right. Oh, this this is like one of my this this joke is really funny. I love this joke. <laughs> I love this. I don't even have any audio on in my headphones while watching this, but that that juice box scene. That's one of like Oh, it's so funny. Somebody said another, and then the last comment says, love you, babe, moi. I said, love you too, ooh, ooh. So that's all the comments, and that's season nine for you. All right, so this is a section of, it, of the video in between the seasons and JK Studios where I talk about the graphs that I made using the data points, and this has made me realize that I love graphs so much, and I'm going to use utilize graphs way more because they're more fun to look at than just data's points i can't even speak data points on a spreadsheet i like both but graphs just are more satisfying to look at season six is the best we know this like season six all the way so good oh wait season two i was wrong okay i was wrong season two is in first place season five is in second season six is in third i thought it was season six am i just insane I thought it was season... Uh, wow. I, I, did I just gaslight my... I think I just gaslit myself. Oh my gosh. I just gaslit myself. Did I... Hold on. I did a poll on my channel saying which was the best. And I'm pretty sure I put season six as the best one. No. Okay. I put season two. I, I freaked out. Somebody did think it was season six, but it was season two. Okay. I thought I thought I put it as season six for a second. And I was like, uh, nope. Yeah, there's bonus sketches. I made it its own section because I figured strategically it made more sense to talk about bonus sketches. I like this edit. It's simple, but conveys a lot. Uh, <laughs> it's also pretty ironic. So, <laughs> I forgot. I did the picture and picture and picture and picture. Oh, uh, so good. That was funny. That caught me off guard. And now it's time for JK Studios. I love JK Studios. The sketches from JK Studios are so freaking good. I watched every JK Studio video, and by that I mean most of them that related to series. I tried to watch every single one of them. I probably missed a few, but I watched most of them, at the very least. With the JK Studio section, I have here in my notes, there was a bit of a lull in production due to me vacationing. My computer having problems. My audio interface for my mic stopped working. That's true. I had to order a new one. My printer ran out of ink. Oh, yeah, that's right. That happened. So I couldn't print my script for a bit because I print all my scripts because I like having them physically. It's just satisfying to look at a script after I've spent hours on it. You know, it's like a, a, an accomplishment for me saying, hey, I did this thing and I'm proud of my hard work, even if nobody else is, which people are. I'm just being dumb. And on top of that, I was waiting for the freelancer shirt that appears in this section and just figured it would make the section better. True. I did order a freelancer shirt for the section uh, because I wanted to. And I like doing costume stuff for videos. I think it's fun. I tried so hard to find a Studio C shirt, but there were none left of like the original design. And I'm like, this is so dumb. I wanted to wear this the entire time for the video, but I can't because all I can find are off brands on Redbubble that aren't even accurate to the original design. And I'm like, what the frick? So stupid. You think that the original design would be selling, uh, but they don't sell anymore. Oh, Jewel cameo, Jewel cameo pog. Uh, see how many times you can spot Jewel in this documentary. It's probably like 10. 
Also, this is the first time me filming outside, not for a video ever, but for more recently. I don't usually film outside, but I wanted to because I wanted to. <laughs> I don't know. I was running out of places to film and I'm like, okay, let's do it outside because I really want to. <laughs> Jules like, what are you doing? <laughs> she keeps like walking past the, I almost said window, the door. She's like, yo, what are you doing? All right. So now we're at the stop and go segment. So there was a part of the other projects that, that some of the Studio C cast has done. And Stop and Go was a movie that stood out to me for a lot of reasons. And I mentioned that in the video. But one of the reasons why this section stood out to me is because there were people that kept walking past my car as I was trying to record the section. And I got super anxious and super nervous because I don't like recording in public-ish places. Which, like, it's technically not a public place. But when there's other people around, it feels like a public place. You know what I mean? And so, like... I wanted to record this section in the car because the whole point, it's a road trip movie. So I was like, oh, I'll record in the car because I'm clever and I think it's cool. But I was super anxious the entire time. Uh, people kept was walking past the car and I was annoyed. There are a few behind the scenes sections where I'm like mad <laughs> at people walking past my car. I don't remember. I don't think I included it in the, in the video. I was thinking about it, but I'm like, nah, let's keep it focused here. All right. And that's the end of the commentary. Thank you for listening. I'm having the credits play because it's the end of the video and yeah i am really proud and happy with part one i think everybody in the comments or not the comments the credits that have like been an influence on me whether it's with studio c or just like my creativity in general i think all the patrons and yeah so thank you all for watching this i am super proud this is like my best video by far. It took way too long and that's fine. I'm fine that it took way too long because I think it's way better for it. I want to do more documentaries in the future. I have several planned. Uh, I have some weird ones planned that I kind of want to do uh, because I found some really cool stuff recently. And by recently, I mean a few months ago that I kind of want to like throw myself into because I think it'd be fun. Plus there's really no videos about it. Yeah, I think every single one of my patrons past and present because without them i wouldn't be where i am today with like my creativity so yeah i also wanted the succession uh song for the credits but it's copyrighted and youtube wouldn't let me and i'm mad and i was mad so i was like okay we'll just do this i think for part two the credits are gonna have a lot more behind the scenes stuff because this was fine as a credit section but it could have been better i just i would i just wanted to be done with the video to be honest just why the credits are pretty lame, but I like it. I, it's simple, but you know, I like it. And yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. This is, I didn't think I would be able to talk this long. I talked for an hour. The reason why I'm recording this is because I was downloading footage from my client because it was taking like an hour to download footage and that like that never happens. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be productive with the time that I have. So yeah, I'm going to go work on client work. And then after that, I'll probably watch some of season 11 because season 10 is done. I have five more seasons to go and then we can talk about uh, what the C really means and what the show is associated with and why it's bad. Okay, bye.